lift up your heads, oh ye gates, swing wide you everlasting doors, lift up your heads, oh ye gates, swing wide you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in, that the King of glory may come in, Yeshua is Lord, Yeshua is Lord. if you would. Psalms chapter 89. I'll read one scripture here. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 89. This is the eve of Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the high and holy days for the Jewish people. Uh, the day of Yom Turah, the day of trumpets, the day of blowing of the trumpets, awakening the Jewish people that ten days from now is Yom Kippur. So we're in the ten days of awe, the ten awesome days. And I told the rabbi, or somebody I told, in the Jewish community, <clears throat> that I would ask the Christians to pray for the safety of our Jewish friends here this week in their synagogues, because on the high holy days, it's a high alert for them, uh, for the enemy to try to attack them. <clears throat> it's not just in Israel anymore. And uh, I wrote in one book, a while back. Today it's Joseph's tomb. Tomorrow it's our churches and synagogues. Of course, the war cry of the radical Muslims in Jerusalem, Israel, is today we fight the Saturday people, tomorrow the Sunday people. <clears throat> so our word to you is the same word that Mordecai gave to Esther. Don't think you'll escape. Don't think we'll escape. We have the same destiny, and we're bonded and connected to the Jewish people. And when they weep, we're going to weep. And when they rejoice, we're going to rejoice. And I promise that I would tell you and ask you if you would please pray for their safety during these high holy days at the synagogues here in Houston. Lord willing, maybe next year, you know, God willing, uh, we can go and help them in some way in the parking lots or whatever we can do to be a physical presence, just being there, <clears throat> looking after things on their behalf. Would you agree with that? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So our time has come, and whether people understand it or want it or not, God is putting the communities together and it's such an honor and privilege to be part of it. Psalm chapter 89, verse 15. Why don't we read it out loud together? Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. Can we read it again? Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. Would you like to be blessed? Would you like to walk in the light of God's countenance, which means having His glory manifested in your life? Here's a way that God says we can do this. And the key phrase of the two little words, joyful sound. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. In our Western mind, we read this, and the words go right past us, we don't realize that the phrase joyful sound is a technical phrase. And if anybody has an amplified Bible, you can see what it says in your amplified Bible. And the joyful sound means amplified who understand and appreciate the spiritual blessings symbolized by the feast. Blessed are those who understand and appreciate the spiritual blessings symbolized by the feasts. Well, we've been taught all these years that the feasts were things for Jewish people that God did away with a long time ago, and that's not anything for us. But that's not what the Bible says. These are not feasts of the Jews. They're the feasts of the Lord. 
And he had in mind for all of God's people of all ages and times to celebrate him through the festivals, which are the pictures of redemption. All of the feasts were pictures of the redeeming work of Yeshua of Jesus when he would come, and they teach us how to walk with God. And so we have the spring festival of Pesach or Passover, the summer festival of Pentecost, Shavuot, and the fall festival of Sukkot or Tabernacles, which is the great season picturing the coming of the Lord.